So let's talk about 2024, right? Now, you know me. I have been of the mind, skip 2023 free agency. The only reason you're trading for expiring salary uh, for 2023 is if you've traded for a whole lot of non-expiring salary and you want to be below the tax for next year. Other than that, I think you should focus primarily more on 2024 free agency. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Makes all the sense in the world. Perfect. So um, let's run through names. Restricted free agents. A lot of these are going to change and a lot of them aren't going to happen, but let's go through them, right? Anthony Edwards, it's not going to happen. And again, we're just talking about these are as as running through all the names as potential trade targets yes. for this trade deadline. These are the restricted free agents for 2024. So not restricted for another year and a half. James Wiseman, not going to happen. Yeah. And it shouldn't. He's just been dreadful. He's been very bad. Yeah. He'll, I think he'll move, but I just don't. It shouldn't be to the Knicks. It should be to another team that is willing to take a flyer on him. Um, another player is not going to happen. LaMelo Ball. No. Um, we can move on from that. Patrick Williams, uh, the best, theoretically, the best trade asset that Bulls have, although I actually am not sure that that's true anymore. He is now two and a half years into his career. He kind of seems like he's settling into this role as a as not maybe what the Bulls thought when they drafted him. Still very young, though. Um, I think the Knicks would have to give up a lot to get Patrick Williams at this point, and I don't know why they would give up all that. Agreed. Isaac Okoro, Okoro he had a you know, small, nice stretch of games, but overall, just not shooting the ball well at all. Nice defender, but just very nice defender, but just a liability on the offensive end. Yeah, the, the Cavs can't score when he's out there. Um, Onyeka Okongwu seems like he's uh, popular in the Atlanta franchise. Uh, part of their part of their future. He's not going anywhere. The currently suspended Killian Hayes. <laughs> I, you know, he's he's done a nice job of building his career back, and I just do not see the fit for where the Knicks are at. No the Pistons. He, he makes a lot more sense there. Uh, Denny Abdia, um, and he's a name, uh, high draft pick. Uh, taken right after the Knicks picked Obi Top in a couple of years ago, I doesn't seem like a like from for from either end uh, a fit. Agreed. Uh, Devin Vassell. Then uh, again, these are all names that the Knicks could have taken. Yeah, had they not taken Obi Toppin. Mm. Um, you ain't getting I, Devin Vassell on the cheap now. Exactly. Price price has gone up. Don't think the Knicks want him. Not not want him, but I don't think he is. He's worth what they are willing to acquire him for. Next name on the list is Tyrese Halliburton. What I wouldn't pay for the Knicks to acquire Tyrese Halliburton. I don't care if you have to give up literally everything on the roster, every draft pick, every player, just, just to hear Wally Zerbiak talk about him after they <laughs> traded for him. Which is pretty funny. Unfortunately, um, that is not going to happen. No, no. Uh, Kyra Lewis Jr. doesn't add much. Work his way back from the injury Has, that he had. Yeah. Hasn't done much. No. Um, that would be weird if the Pelicans like were out on him amidst, like in the midst of him like recovering from an injury and like he just he's never gotten a chance. Um, they have better I, talent ahead of him is the only thing. Dyson yeah, Daniel, no, like, but, Alvarado. Yeah, I, yeah, but like the, you know why? I don't know why would it, like who who's taking a flyer on him? I don't know. Uh, Aaron Nesmith. I'll, I'll wait. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Nesmith is with Indiana has been um, good after getting traded from Boston. Um, I think they like him. I'm not sure why they would want to trade him. Agreed. Uh, I know we might differ a little bit on this. Maybe eh, not. Maybe you were saying it in jest when we uh, talked. About I, I, I was more saying it as like he's, he's a name. And cool. uh, say the name. Cole Anthony is a name. I just don't foresee the Knicks looking to make a move for him, given where they are currently at. I don't think they will either. This seems like a move that one of the prior Knicks front offices would have made. It does not seem like a move that this front office would make because he is really just not. And I don't think he's analytics friendly. No. Um, and they had a chance to draft him and it didn't seem like they were very interested. So if the analytics department doesn't like him and the team that was in charge of picking draft picks doesn't like him, he hasn't exactly blown the doors off the league since he's been in it. 
Uh, apparently he wants a lot more money than the, the magic are willing to give him. So like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff there. Probably uh, not going to happen. Agreed. The next name. Chuma Okiki. Mm-hmm. It's your turn. That's why. Oh, yeah. um, yeah. But the Knicks are not trading for Chuma Okiki. He's, he's an interesting young player, uh, but he is a, he's ostensibly a four. Yeah. I don't, I don't see that. No. Isaiah Stewart. Uh, will be interesting to see if he's on the market this summer. They are right in the heat of the Victor Wembanyama trade. They do have Jalen Duran. Uh, until then, I yes, uh, thank you. Yes, uh, until then, I don't foresee him as being an option. I mean, maybe if it's if you're moving Hart and Shine out, I could understand it a little bit more. But I don't, I don't foresee it happening. No, the guy the the Pistons might be lo- looking to move is coming up in a few names. Uh, Poku, Poku's not going anywhere. He he's going to retire at Thunder probably. Yeah. Uh, Josh Green, he's been doing a better job this season in Dallas. I think they see him as, hey, when we make the trade to get someone next to Luka Doncic, we have yep. no choice but to include him. Don't see why they would move him before then. We skip the next name and, and go back to it because it's. I feel like it requires a slightly longer conversation. Not that long, but um, so I'll take Precious Achua uh, on Toronto. Was seems to be, whatever. He's a big guy. The Knicks aren't trading for him. Agreed. Um, Simon Fontecchio. Uh, not going to happen. Uh, just there's no reason for it. He's also been one of the worst players, I think, in the NBA this year. So, yeah. um, let's. Do you want to hit Bay now or go back to Bay at the end? Let's talk about uh, at the end. Okay. Uh, Tyrese Maxey, the Sixers should not trade in Tyrese Maxey. Correct. Uh, Zeke Naji, former Nick Killer. Um, don't know why the Nuggets necessarily deal him. Things are rolling pretty well for them. Yeah. So I think he's staying put. If anything, it seems like they, they may want to give him more minutes. Uh, Peyton Pritchard, uh, the Knicks already have Emmanuel quickly, so no need to make that trade. Yep. Uh, Jane McDaniels, he's Minnesota's best wing defender. He's really good. Don't see why they're giving him up. They need him in order for them to stop floundering and start winning games. And they also are not about to trade away the guy that was the alleged, like, the, the, the line in the stand on the mm-hmm. on the Rudy Gobert deal. Mm, yeah. Oh boy. Uh Malachi Flynn uh has never really gotten his footing in Toronto, but again, he's duplicitous of what the Knicks have. Mm-hmm. Desmond Bain, not going anywhere. Sorry, I had to laugh for a second there. Uh shout out Des. Uh Kessler Edwards. What is going on with Kessler Edwards? He's playing for the Nets, which means he's part of a winning situation right now. Um, yeah, he's not getting traded. No. Herbert Jones. Uh, he's in a really fascinating situation because he could become a restricted free agent or wait a season. He's an unrestricted free agent. Depends on where the Pelicans are at in terms of the Pels made him. that choice. To be clear, correct. Much like the much like the Knicks made that choice with Mr. Robinson. Yes, and I I don't see it. He's he's a phenomenal defender, but on the offensive end, it's just it's rough. It's really rough. There's a bunch of names here after Herb Jones uh, that were picked in the second round of the draft a couple of years ago. I don't think they're necessary to go through all of them. Um, let's hit on Sadiq Bay, who's the one name that we skipped over from the first rounders uh, from a couple of years back. Just because Bay's name has been in rumors is like the Pistons are potentially looking to not maybe looking to move him, but like he's maybe he could be had. And it, it, the room, the rumors of Bay kind of remind me a little bit of the rumors that emerged about Emmanuel quickly um, from here in terms of like the Knicks are looking to get a first round pick. Well, the Pistons are looking to get a first round pick. Bay is an interesting player. I don't see that the Knicks are going to be the team that blows away the Pistons with enough that they're going to want to make that swap. Yeah, I agree. You know, the offense is really not, he's billed as kind of a three and D type player, but he's not really either on either end of that. <laughs> no, he's not. Um, yeah. But I think the main thing to consider here, and I, I want to tread a little bit lightly, but if the Knicks want to hypothetically create cap space in 2024, any cap hold that they have for most of these players would be kept. And then that's an issue. Yep. So it's just something to keep in the back of your mind. It doesn't, you can still be above the cap and not have to worry about it. But with that considered, if they wanted to go below the cap, then it kind of poses a little bit of a problem. Um, but even still, I mean, no matter who they would acquire, it would still probably have an impact on, on cap space and everything. But I just don't see Bay being the target worth them exploring because of his limitations on both sides. Yeah. 
this isn't a player who through two and a half years of his career, you look at and be like, man, there's a real, there's a real uncovered gem there waiting and waiting to be discovered that's sitting and wasting away in Detroit. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't see that um, in the way that I think another team might look at a manual quickly. Uh, I don't see it with Bay. So I think we can, we can move on. So I want to just list nine names. Don't want to go in depth with a lot of them. Really. So why'd you pick these nine? These are now we're looking at unrestricted free agents for 2024. So these are nine where I didn't want to go through the list of all of the unrestricted free agents because there's, there's some 2023 guys over there. It it might be reinventing the wheel, but there's some players we talked about some we haven't. And I just want to focus more on them and, and show why they're in or out. So uh, first is Tobias Harris. There's, of course, Ian Bakley reported there was initial interest in Tobias Harris. My takeaway was that was at a time when there would be a Julius Randle trade, not yep. moving Julius, not moving RJ Barrett, not having Tobias Harris come off the bench. Glad they didn't do that. Um, so yes, that's certainly one of them. We've talked enough about Gordon Hayward. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I just no. want to add one quick point here, which is if you're at home and you're thinking about trades and everything. And I know this is a little bit more elevated in terms of like, you don't need to, but it's just to consider Julius Randall has two likely incentives in his contract this year. Isaiah Hardenstein has an unlikely incentive that could hit. If all three of those incentives hit, then the Knicks actually have to consider the luxury tax. Whereas right now that they're like $7 million or so below it, you factor those in and suddenly you really only have like $4 million in, in room, if you had to assume that they're going to hit getting someone like Gordon Hayward, there are ways around it, but it's likely going to catapult you towards the tax. Mm-hmm. There's no reason for the Knicks to be in the tax. And no, I think they no, everything no, they no. can to get away from that because it starts a clock that you don't really want to hit right now, which is to be in the repeater tax. And they would have absolutely no interest in, in starting that clock in a season in which they are not <laughs> contending. Exactly. Um, so that's Gordon Hayward. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich, he's got a player option in 2023. Um, I don't, first of all, I think there's a chance he opts out if he's playing well. This is just for anybody who gets their Bogdanovich is confused. This is the Atlanta Bogdanovich. Correct. Yep. And uh, I think he's a, he's an important piece to Atlanta. I think if anything, Atlanta is just going to try to move off of the John Collins contract. If they're worried about the financial aspects, you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, (sighs) I'm, I'm, it's going to come off like I'm comparing these two players when one is certainly better than the other. But like when you have Evan Fournier on your bench collecting dust, it does not strike me that you are going to make a trade for Bogdan Bogdanovich to give up what it would take to get him from Atlanta. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, OJ Ananobi. We talked We've discussed about him. in depth. Yeah. Just, I will say, I, I feel like a team like the Pelicans. That has that's why when you said Carlos Jr., what team would take a flyer? Like to me, if we're talking about salary filler, um, a, a team that wants to like maybe shift younger, get a little bit more depth. If the if the Pelicans wanted OG Ananobi and if they were moving Herb Jones in the deal, and of course they could put protections on the Lakers pick. That's I was about year. to say like the Lakers, could, the Lakers pick this year with. I mean, top one protections or top two protections, something like that. That's talk about a nice asset for a team like the Raptors if they wanted to pivot. Yep. They could do top four protections and they could even include, um, you know, it could go over to the next Lakers pick and they get the right to defer which year they want. It's a really good offer. That's why I think that any deal with the Knicks and OG and Anobi could just be topped by a team like the Pelicans. And I think they do it because I, I think they're one really good piece away from stamping themselves as like, oh yeah, we're we're not just a contender. We're legitimately a contender, but that's Pelicans film school. We're Knicks film school. Uh, you have Doug McDermott on here. Dougie Buckets. Yeah, Dougie we McDermott. talked about him before. Just yeah. don't see it as a fit. Uh, uh, I'll let you take the next, the last four names. I was about to say, we could just say these. Torian Prince uh, is non Torian Prince, Gary Harris, and Chetty Osmond are all non-guaranteed for 23-24. And then there's Grayson Allen. Um, of Only these, one of those players is good. <laughs> yeah, Grayson Allen is good. Yeah. Um, and he's an important part to the Bucs, and the Bucs are trying to win a championship this year, and I don't see why they're trading Grayson Allen. Agreed. So, we've gone through a bunch of restricted free agents 2024. We've gone through some unrestricted free agents. There are two names that I have not mentioned. 
Okay. One of them, I know you know. It's Eric Gordon. <laughs> this, this, look, this isn't a profound, oh my God, I can't believe it. Like it, He was mentioned as certainly an option. He's a very good shooter. Could we, um, could we just, just, for, yes. just, before we talk about it, could we just, what a soundbite after the Rockets Oh my game. God. Oh, geez. Uh, for anybody who missed it, what, I think it was a Rockets reporter, although I'm honestly not sure, asked him, like a, the ultimate softball question. Like, so, you know, you know, it's been a rough year, but like, you know, you guys have, you guys have improved since the beginning of the year, right? Something along those lines. And he's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they yeah. scored what? Like 53 points in the last three quarters, something like that. Uh, yeah. That, I, I would, I would not feel great if I were a Rockets fan right now. Yeah. It's tough. So. It's really tough. Um, and that's why I think they're going to try to move Eric Gordon. He's an efficient player, certainly older. He's 34 years old. His defense is meh, ups and downs, certainly. He can switch. He's a bit, he's a guard who's a, a built like a, a, yep. he's I, a big I, dude. I, once again, know you well enough to know what the exact definition is going to be. But yes, it, well, I think we've even said it before, but yes. Um, and perhaps more importantly in this context is he's got a fully non guaranteed salary of $20.9 million in the 2023 2024 season. Hilariously enough, that contract, that salary gets fully guaranteed if he goes to a team and that team wins the NBA championship. Yeah. So it's going to be pretty awesome when the Knicks trade for Eric Gordon and, and his contract champion. is automatically guaranteed. That's good. Um, but the reason I also want to highlight Eric Gordon is, you know, again, he's he is 34. Um, so you're you're going to be paying for a decline, but he's still going to give you good minutes. And that's why I think that there will be a team out there that is willing to offer a highly protected first round pick, maybe something that then yields to two seconds, but it's like, it's the sort of thing is like the Rockets can say, look, we got a first round pick for him. Um, and I don't think the Knicks are at any point in the ability to do that. Well, they could, but they shouldn't. They absolutely shouldn't if that's the price. Um, and he's having a slightly down shooting year this year, especially in comparison to years prior. But um but he he's a he's a good option, just not a good option in my mind for the price that the Knicks would have to pay at this moment. What say you? It and depends. I, just sorry, if the price drops a little bit, then it's a different story. Like, what's the worst of the protected picks the Knicks own? Probably the Bucks first. Let's see. That's funny because the protections are so light on that. I think a lot of people would go in a different direction. I think. Let me. I'll, okay, I'll, I'll throw. It. Let's hypothetically. And we we do not have to have this discussion right now because it's a multifaceted discussion. But hypothetically, let's say the Knicks had zero, zero interest in having a second first round pick in this year's draft. And they are slated to have a second round, a, a second first round pick in this year's draft, the Mavs pick. Just for argument's sake, let's say the Knicks in their internal discussions were like, you know what? We don't want to be left with a situation like we were left in two years ago where we traded this pick for this Hornets pick. And then it became Cam Reddish and then a whole, it's a whole, the whole thing. Let's say they were internally being like, all right, we're going to see what we could get for that pick, the Mavs pick, with some protections, I'm sure. And in this situation, it would be Fournier's contract, right? If your priority as a Knicks front office is like, we want to give ourselves the best chance to get the sixth seed as opposed to like the seventh or the eighth, because we want to guarantee ourselves those couple of home playoff games. We want to give ourselves a real shot to have like a game six in our building type of thing. Like if that's your priority, then you should go trade for Eric Gordon. Um, because I bet you he'd help you do that. Cause like, I, I don't really care what the numbers say about Eric Gordon. That dude, if he gets traded to a team that has some like real excitement on it and he gets off of the current situation he's in, I have a funny feeling Eric Gordon's going to be able to, to to go have a throwback couple of months to what we know Eric Gordon's capable of because that dude's still good. If that's your priority, should that be the next priority? Well, I'm not going to sit here and tell you it should or it shouldn't. Um, I, I I I am not so much of that mindset. Agreed. Again, I, he's a good player. He would certainly add something to the Knicks. He would help them. He's a, he would. He would. He'd be, he'd be good. It all comes down to price. And if we're talking about a Derrick Rose level return or like a little bit more than that because he's a better player than what Rose was when he was acquired and even Rose gave the Knicks the shot in the arm that they needed, then I would understand it. But 
once we get into the like protected first round pick territory, that's where I'm not interested. Just real briefly, I don't, we, we don't need to talk about this for too long. Can we agree that in all likelihood, the best that the Rockets are going to get for Eric Gordon, or let me rephrase that, the, the Rockets are probably not going to get anything better for Eric Gordon than the, than the Dallas pick? Yeah, no, I, I, that's by far what I would imagine the best. Unless okay. it's the Suns, you know, because there was almost a trade with them yeah. that would have sent Eric Gordon to the Suns. So it's possible that they, you know, would they have done a top 20 lottery protected pick or top 20, top 20 protected pick or lottery protected pick? Maybe um, that's probably the closest I could see them going. The, the Knicks don't own a second round pick this year. Um, the Rockets don't own a second round pick this year, um, but they do have a couple of extra 2024 second rounders. Um, if they were to send a couple of future seconds back to the Knicks and the Knicks send that Dallas pick, I wonder if that wouldn't spur some more conversation. I just throwing it out there. Yeah. I just don't think it's of interest. If you're the Knicks, like what I would have imagined, you know how there was the discussion of, Hey, what if there was a three team deal involving the Lakers, right? Like the Lakers have, what was at the time, two second round picks that were in the thirties. Like if we're talking about, Hey, what if the Rockets wanted a pick that was higher up? That's where it comes into play. Now the bulls are getting better. So that pick is getting it's depreciating in value. Um, and the Lakers, who knows, but like that, there is something to be said of, I'm not itching to move the Pistons second round pick that the Knicks own in 2024, because there is a legitimate chance that it is somewhere between 31 and 35. And I should say the Knicks own a, a I, I should correct myself a minute ago. The Knicks own a bunch of 24, 24, 2024 seconds. They're probably not looking to get another one, maybe a, a more distant one than that though. Right. And that's, that's where I'm then very curious about. Are they willing to move one of the future picks in to then get a, a 2023 pick? Is that something the Rockets want? Ultimately, I think it's, it's moot. I think he's going to cost a little too much for what they're looking for. Um, but yeah. Last thing, I promise this is way too much time for our Gordon. No, but it's important because he he's I think he's legitimately, as we know, he, on the short short list of it's a very short list that they want to get. As we've as we've just gone through, the Rockets have been based on the reporting, putting on a stern face, like, oh, we don't need to move him this year. Like we didn't move him last year. We don't need to move him this year. I wonder if internally they're I, again, I know nothing. I'm just shooting the shit here. I wonder if internally they're like, no, this is the time. Um, the time to move him is now and let's just get the best. Unless the unless we can't get anything that we think is worth anything at all. Yeah. But if they internally are like, no, we got to we got to move him. And, you know, in that case, if that was the case, the market is whatever the market is. And we don't know who else might get in, in, in into such a conversation. You mentioned Phoenix. They're the obvious one. Yeah. Philly, if they had more assets, if they, they had, owned. yeah. Um, but no, it, I agree. I don't think the Rockets are like, well, let, let's guarantee his contract and pay him twenty point nine million dollars to be in the same position we're in next year as he's a year older, and there's less team control, and we hope to get a first round pick. I, they have to, in my mind, pull the trigger probably for expiring salary. Uh, it'd be kind of funny if Eric Gordon went to the Knicks and Derek Rose went out for him because they were AAU teammates. I don't foresee that as being necessarily the situation, but if the, again, that's why I think a three team deal would make sense if, if it were expiring salary and not Derek Rose. Um, but yeah, I I'm, I'm with you on Eric Gordon. Good player okay. for the right price. Do it. The right price to me is not a first round pick. If you're the Knicks okay. and there's one other player, uh, that's 2024 free agent. Last uh, but not least, last but not least in this case, um, it is Malik Beasley. So, I would not be surprised in the slightest if we heard anything about Malik Beasley. I'm not saying that is that's not source info. It's really just for reasons I will lay out. Um, he's a really good shooter. It's funny. I, can I just real quick? I looked up his name earlier today. Do because um, I was looking up who has the most made three pointers in the league this year. Because uh, Julius Randle is uh, tied for 12th with with Damian Lillard on that list, mm-hmm. and one of the names I happen to notice who's pretty high up there. Malik Beasley has made yeah. the fourth fourth most threes in the league after 
Buddy Heald, Steph Curry, and Anthony Simons. As of as of the moment I am reading this, he has made one more three than Donovan Mitchell to give you an idea of the company he's keeping, shooting 37.5% from downtown. Um gives you a little creation. Um a lot of creation. Ton. I mean, his pull-up game for the last two to three years has been fantastic. It's and that's it's something good. that you really like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, from yeah. their guards. Yeah, keep it going. You have it all listed here. Yeah, he's efficient. Um, he's on the younger side, he's 26. Uh, he's not good on the defensive end. He's very much a liability. Um, but I think it, it also could be based on who he's been playing with too. Like, you know, he's seen a lot of minutes with Jordan Clarkson. That's just not a great defensive fit. You'd like to think that the Knicks could mix and match accordingly a little bit better. Um, he's the elephant in the room is that he had past legal troubles that were concerning. Uh, he, it seems that he has kept his nose clean, so to speak. I don't believe that there have been any incidents, uh, at least that have been public. Uh, and then similar to with Eric Gordon, he's got a 2023-2024 uh, salary that is a team option, $16.5 million. And um, we should say for anybody who may have forgotten, the Knicks were absolutely in on Malik Beasley um, when he was entering. Uh, that was restricted free agency, right? Um, yes. And yeah. he ended up thinking a new contract with Minnesota, and then he was traded um, in the in the Gobert deal. Uh, yeah, I'll second what you said. Would not surprise me in the least. Yeah. Um, would add, would add a real scoring punch to a Nick second unit. Um, yeah, yeah, would add a real I, scoring punch. I know. Here's the thing. He's um, so he's in the EPM has him in the seventy first percentile on offense and the eighth percentile on defense. That's really where right. he's struggling. But um, he's, again, his true shooting percentage is not great. But his effective field goal percentage is above 50%. If you look at the shooting over the years, this is the first year in a, in a little bit where he's doing better at the rim. But efficiency wise, again, like he's, it's funny to see them match up because if you're watching this, you see the last three seasons, he's been largely efficient. It's been good, um, especially from three. But I think the one thing I do want to highlight, which I'm happy you mentioned it because it happens to be the next slide, is uh, this is from John Krasinski, friend of the pod who writes for the athletic. Uh, he said he wrote back in 2020 about Malik Beasley. Why did the number of his contract go so high? One major factor in speaking to people familiar with the process, the New York Knicks, Tom Thibodeau and crew are in desperate need of a talent upgrade to the roster and a 24 year old shooting guard who hit 42.6% of his threes with the wolves last season would certainly qualify as an upgrade. Sources say the Knicks first priority for a wing was to get Gordon Hayward. And they told Beasley if they missed out, they were coming after him. The Knicks had the cap space and it would be conceivable that Tibbs wouldn't have minded stealing away a player. The wolves gave up a first round pick for at the trade deadline. And the one thing I want to add to that, John, do you know who was in charge of acquiring Malik Beasley on the Timberwolves? Oh man, is it someone who had his own uh, his own issues uh, behind the scenes in the uh, in the in the Minnesota organization? It could be, it could be, <laughs> and it could be that that individual is uh, currently working with the oh, New Knicks. Goodness, what are the odds? Yeah, uh, Gerson Rosas. Yeah, that be the name. Um. um it, man, um, there's also the small matter of the fact that Malik Beasley currently plays for the Utah Jazz, who yes have had allegedly conversations with the Knicks involving trades over mm-hmm. the last several months. Uh, not several. Oh, what it depends on your definition of several is whatever this summer. Yeah. Um. um so mm. yeah, I, I think he's certainly an option. Now, again, I want to talk about the free agent aspect because I said well. For Sadiq, B, for Sadiq Bay, it wouldn't make sense to get him because of his cap hold. And then if Malik Beasley's here, you have his cap hold. The difference is, I think if the Knicks can get a significant upgrade, it's fine to clear away Beasley in this case. Um, if you trade for Bay, you, you don't necessarily want to trade for the restrictive free agent and then cut him loose. I know that might seem backwards, um, but to me, Beasley's a better player. So at that point, it's like, all right, if we have to cut one of them, like it's it's fine. I, I don't know if I'm making complete logic. Can you can you no, you're, translate no, for me? I, I think the notion of like so be, let, let's just simplify it. There's less long term commitment right now with Beasley. If you're trading for yeah. Bay, you're trading for his restricted free agents rights rights and all that that comes with it. This front office said it if we said it once, we've said it five dozen times. 
flexibility. They like to have the ability to keep their options open. And if you're trading for a guy with a player option a year from now, you're keeping your options open. Um, I just keep thinking about the basketball fit more. And like Beasley's a, he's a wing with not great size, but like for a shooting guard, he's got pretty good size. Like they have RJ running those backup units. I'm just, I'm just trying to envision like, so you got quickly Beasley, RJ, allegedly Obi Toppin will be coming back. And then, you know, Hardenstein, like that's because you'd be, unless, man, I don't want to go down that road. And, you know, if, if, if the B, if the quickly stuff is, does not go as we both think it will, and they do really explore moving quickly before this deadline for reasons that who the hell knows, wouldn't that be a way to kind of try to replace the scoring punch that quickly, you know, they want from quickly. Maybe they haven't gotten as much as they'd like from quickly. You're obviously giving up a lot on the defensive end, um, but you still have deuce here to maybe stick in. It's, it's an issue. It's a, a lot of, you know, the tangle webs we weave, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then there's, there's one more thing. Well, I should, I should add, I want to add something with, with the jazz actually in, in context um, before I move on to something else. So the jazz next season, they've got, $136 million in, in commitments. And it's a lot of those are likely, right? Like unless they trade Mike Conley this season, I don't see why they partially, they pay him to go away. Like he's got $14 million in partial guarantees. Like there's no reason to, to say we'll pay you to go away when they can just keep him. Uh, Jordan Clarkson's got a player option. He's going to opt out. The jazz love him. He's going to stay. You know, I, I don't think that they're going to try to move off of Kelly Olenek. They could. I mean, they could save some money there. They've got three first round picks in this upcoming draft. Not quite sure whether they want to win or lose. It should be noted that next year their pick is top 10 protected. So if they wanted to kind of sit out next year, they could do it and still keep it. That's an interesting one. And it's why I do wonder if they're going to start trying to clear space, right? Like you've got, um, this is the next one I'll show, like Agbaji. He was acquired in the Cavs trade for Donovan Mitchell. He's only seen 16 games. He's averaged eight minutes per game. Is there any desire to run him out there and see what he's like this season? Like at a certain point, if you're the Jazz and you want to move Beasley, wouldn't it make more sense to do it before you have to take on these first round picks and you've got all these players playing? Um, Because if you look, I mean, the, the Jazz have done, I mean, there are 13 guys who have played. 16 or more games. Uh, there are 10 who have played 25 or more. Um, there are 12 who've played more than 20. Like it's just, it, they have a lot of guys. They need to consolidate in some way before these picks come in. And it would not shock me if they wanted to move off of someone like Beasley, someone like Rudy Gay and, and find a way to do that. And let's all also put a fine point on it here. The jazz of feels like they're still been one of the best success stories this year. And like, look, for a lot of people thought they were going to have the worst record in basketball. They're sitting here and they're within a game of 500. This is trending in a very, 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 very clear way for Utah. They are a game under 500 after they started off the year. I want to say they started off something like 10, three or 10, four, something mm-hmm. it was good. They're a game under 500. They're still in the play in obviously right now, but they are only as I, as I sit here now and there's games being played on, on Sunday night, they are only two and a half games back of where the Thunder are for the sixth spot in the lottery. And why is that important? Well, if you're in the sixth spot in the lottery, you have uh, about, I think, a 37% chance of getting into the top four. Where Utah is right now, they have a 4.8% chance of getting into the top four. Pretty sure Danny Ainge and all the folks over there would rather have um, a, a a number to get into the top four that is a four followed by another digit and then the decimal point as opposed to a four followed by the decimal point. So they have a real chance to shoot up because there's there's just not a lot of room between them. Now, some of these other teams, did I get it wrong, Andrew? 34.8%. But, yes, but that's what t- that they're because they're tied right now. Sure. The if it's if it's six solo, yeah. I saw, I saw the same thing that you're that you're looking at. I'm just the messenger here. That's why Andrew texted. I know. Um, the, the, there are other teams that are going to be pushing to get into 
the the top there. But honestly, outside of Detroit, Charlotte, Houston, and San Antonio, because I think you, I think Orlando is going to keep winning winning some games because they're actually decent. Like the Thunder, like as long as SGA is healthy and upright, like they're going to maybe keep winning some games. Like there's a chance for Utah still, even for as well as they did early on this season. If you told me they ended up at the fifth or the sixth spot in lottery, not crazy at all, and that gives them um, more than a third chance to get into the top four. They're going to sell. It's just they're going to sell. They're going to sell off pieces and Beasley makes as much sense for them to sell off, I think, as anyone on the roster, because like marketing seems like it might be a core piece for them. There's been talk about like Clarkson being a guy that they want to keep around for cultural reasons and other things of that nature. Nobody wants Connolly. You know, am I forget anybody like a prominent player on the roster? I mean, I could see Connolly going to a to a team like the Wolves, but if you're the Jazz, why do you want to help the Wolves when you also own their pick unprotected? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, you just signed Colin Sexton to that extension. I don't know if anybody's beating your door down for Colin Sexton right now. I I mean, Beasley's the guy. Beasley's the guy. And the question of the cost, right? Because that's and that's where I am so fascinated by it because I think that with Eric Gordon, you have more of a middle ground, right? Like you're getting someone where you know he can, he's not going to be a liability on the defensive end. Yeah. And with Beasley, he is. I yeah. mean, he he just is. And then you get to the point of, well, if you have Evan Fournier, who is able to, I mean, we've seen him be a good pull-up shooter in the past. We know yeah. that he has more size um, than than Beasley does. Is there a reason why you, if you're the Knicks, you would feel compelled to doing it? And if you're sending out salary, like if you're doing, if you're dealing with Utah one-on-one, then you're you you have to send out Derrick Rose. He has to be the only option, and I presumably they would buy him out or they try to flip him again. I was about to say, could you imagine he, the, the second time in his career, Derrick Rose gets waived by the Jazz? It would it'd be pretty funny, admittedly. But even still, like that's that's where I'm so fascinated by it, where it's like it almost reminds me of it's like, hey mom, can we get McDonald's? We have McDonald's at home, and it's like cut to McDonald's at home, and it's it's Evan Fournier because like you have him in your roster if you're bringing him back yeah. in the rotation. And if the Jazz don't necessarily want to take on more future money with salary with Fournier's salary the following year, it's just a lot going into it, which I'm fascinated by. Which I would say leads. Well, I'll let you answer, and then uh, I'll go to the next one. No, I just if you're asking me yes or no, do I think they pull off this trade? I say no. Yeah. Ultimately, I, I think I agree. Um, let's talk about one more thing. Okay. 2025 restricted free agents. So okay. these are the players who were drafted. Last 2021 draft. Okay. Um, Kate Cunningham, not happening in any universe. Yeah. I, I think a lot of these we could just quickly dispense like Jalen yes. Green, Evan Mobley, Scotty Barnes. Um, Jay, I mean, we could keep going until we hit a name that you think maybe is worth talking about. Jalen Suggs, not at his value right now. Josh Giddy, no. Kuming is a name with the Warriors. Sure. Um, I don't know that they're selling that low on him. Uh, it seems like his value is low right now. Um, Franz Wagner, not going anywhere. Davion Mitchell, Kings are doing great. No reason to trade him. Zaire Williams, why would the Grizzlies want to trade him? They're doing great. Uh, James Booknight, why would you want him? Yep. Um, Chris Duarte, well, there's an interesting name uh, yep. with the Pacers. Um, yeah. 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 I don't know what else there is to say other than that. He's a guy the Knicks really wanted. And he, the, there's a rumor that just came out that the Knicks were talking on the Pacers. Mm-hmm. Um, Moses Moody with the Warriors. Not, I d- doubt that happens. And then you got Kispert, Sengun. Sengun's not going anywhere. Um, Trey Murphy, the third with the Pelicans. They're doing very well. No reason to trade him. Trey Mann, Thunder seem to like him. Kai Jones, not getting time. And uh, Charlotte, why would the Knicks look to acquire another center? And then Jalen Johnson, Keon Johnson, Isaiah Jackson, like the Knicks aren't looking at acquiring these guys. No, at least not most of them. Um, Trey Murphy, I think the only reason the Pelicans would do it is if if there's that OG and an OB trade and the Knicks can kind of find their way in to be a third team, trade a pick to get him, but I don't see it. But there is one player that I do want to talk about, and it is Chris Duarte. And the reason I want to talk about Chris Duarte, believe me, this was not something that I wanted to talk about. I really oh, this is the thing to, you were hoping to save. I really wanted to save this. Okay. Because with this thing that came out with Obi Toppin, this is a thought I had had within the last month. And I thought, I'll just, I'll talk about it in the off season. Because no one wants to talk about Obi Toppin getting traded. I don't even want to talk about Obi Toppin getting traded right now. But I, I have to, I feel compelled to do it. And we might, you know, get back to this at a later point. 
Hopefully not, but we might. And here's the sort of thing where the Pacers are so thin at the four and that they like, you know, Obi Toppin would fit in beautifully in Indiana. That's the thing. And there are other reasons that I want to get into, but Andrew's going to be mad at me for spoiling future cap or no cap. So I'm going to stay quiet about it. In the meantime, I just want to talk about Chris Duarte, where he's been shaky on offense this year, has really not played very much because he was injured. He is a good defender, not so much to the point of attack, but especially off ball and on the wing. Uh, the paces were 5.7 points better on defense when he was on the floor versus off the floor. He's young because he's 25, but he's older because he's in the second year of his rookie contract. And speaking of that contract, he's making $3.9 million this year, $4.1 million this uh, the following year, and $5.9 million the year after that. Um, there's really not much comparing Obi to Duarte. This, this idea was never and would never be one for one um, because Obi has a lot more to show than Duarte. It's the sort of thing, like we can look at the offense and we can look at the defense. They both show an interesting thing. Of course, the issue with... Um, with Duarte is because he's missed a lot of time. It hurts his stats in the sense of yeah. like this year is harder to pinpoint. Um, and like, he's been really bad on offense, but again, he's, he just hasn't had much time there at least this season last year. Yeah. I was, was about to, and, and he's been injured this season. We should say yeah. he started the season off hurt. Yeah. And, and the offensive end last year, he was, he was fine. Not the most efficient was a shooter. Um, this year, not doing as well, but there's context for all of this. And a huge reason why is Duarte has had to play the four. He's been, if you go back, you look at it and it's, he was a wing last year. This year, he's a forward. He's six foot five. He's not someone who should be seeing time exclusively at the four. And he hasn't been exclusively at the four. And yet, when you consider it, 41% of his minutes, according to basketball reference, were at the four. 55% were at the three. Last year, he didn't play any minute. Clearly, the last one has him at zero minutes, uh, at, essentially 0% at the four. This year, they have him at 28%. And he split his time with shooting guard and small forward. Like he's, he's, a, he's a wing. That's what he is. And by circumstance, he's had to play as a forward. And, you know, like when you consider what the Knicks like, I, I love this graphic that Jonathan Wasserman, friend of the pod, has. I'm going to show it every single time. Yeah. <laughs> The Knicks, when it comes to their ones and twos in the draft, love players who can pull up. And if you're watching, I have a rectangle. Or if you're not watching, I have a rectangular box that shows like the sweet spot for what the Knicks really love in terms of players who are taking a lot of pull-ups and what their percentages or their points per possession are. If you look at this past draft, you'll notice that none of the names in that box fit anything near where the Knicks had the 11th pick, which is probably a big reason why the Knicks opted to punt on it because they knew they didn't need it. Like Nemhard is the only guy who I feel within this, and Branham, Branham's fine too, but like Branham was, he fell. He was a, he, they thought he was a riser and he fell to what late teens, early twenties to the Spurs. Yeah. Um, and then if you go to the year prior, look at this beautiful box. It's gorgeous. Look yeah. what's in it. Yeah, you, you got Kate Cunningham and you got Austin Reeves, but you have Deuce McBride. Yeah. You have Quentin Grimes. You have yep. Neo You have um, Zaire, right? I think it's Zaire Williams. Yep, it is. James Looks like it. You got Trey Mann. Who and there was then, a, a thought that maybe the Knicks liked. Yep. And then right next to Trey Mann is Chris Duarte. And I think the whole philosophy here, if you're the Knicks, and again, it, I don't want to spoil what's already, what I'm already sort of spoiling. If you are the Knicks and you're thinking, is there a way where we could talk to Indiana because they have three first round picks this year in this year's draft? They have their own. They have the protected Cavs pick that's going to convey. And they have the Celtics pick, which is also protected and going to convey. If you are the Cavs, if you're the Pacers and you're saying, how can we get someone to play the four right away? We can move off of one of our players who's at the wing and we can trade one of our protected first round picks. And in this, in my mind, the only reason you do this if you're the Knicks is you do top in for Duarte, one of the, you know, one of the two worst protected picks, whichever one's better, and a protected future pick, 2025. If I'm the Knicks, that's the only reason I do it. And I understand that Obi's value is not sky high, 
But a big part of that is because the Knicks have a Ferrari sitting in their garage collecting dust. And right now he's hurt, but even before then. And it's going to stay that way unless they do something different. Now, um, that's, I, again, wasn't going to talk about it. Didn't want to talk about it. But since it was brought up, since we talked about all these other players at the wing who could be serviceable, what they'd cost, you're looking at a situation where are you taking away from the fact that Obi Toppin's not going to play at the four and you're reallocating the that asset at a premium position that you need on the wing and you can turn that into more assets that you have. It's tough. It's really tough. It's the head and the heart. To not talk about it would be ignoring the elephant in the room and we don't do that here. I'm glad you brought it up. I don't think anything more needs to be said about it than what you've already said about it because you, you hit on all the components of the discussion. But like, this is a guy that Nick's like very, 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 very strongly coveted very clearly from all of the reporting, not some of the reporting, all of the reporting yeah. before that draft. And since the draft, Scarlett Scarlett Ray agrees. Agrees. Uh, you know, and and that was a draft that was only a year and a half ago. And then like we've, we're now in the midst of another Julius Randall Renaissance where it's like, is he making another all-star team? And we're talking about the guy who backs him up. And that's just the reality of the situation. So we don't, we don't like to stick our heads in the sand here. So I'm happy you at least had the discussion. Yeah. And we'll have more of a discussion either at the deadline or in the off season, whichever comes first, if it involves a trade with Obi Toppin. Sounds like a plan. Um, this was great, Jeremy, really. Uh, so basically what I am taking away from this, I don't want to speak for our listeners, but what I'm taking away from this is that um, while it may seem very obvious for the Knicks in the position they're in to want to swap out some of their salary that is not necessarily helping them, um, win games right now for salary that does help them win games. Um, not sure there's a perfect fit. Um, some potentially good fits, but nothing that's perfect. Fair to say? I would. And I also think that in this case, if you're moving Obi and you are getting someone like Duarte, you still need someone who can see time at the four because you can't keep doing the too big thing. Um, and I'm just very curious as to where where that player would be. Like, I don't want it to be a Rudy Gay type unless are you getting assets in order to take on his salary and who are you trading for? Like it, there's so much involved, so much with money and everything going out, but you'd be answering one problem, but creating a new one. Listen, man, there's a, there's a four just sitting out there waiting, waiting, waiting for the phone call, waiting by the back phone. A forager. Who would that be? Oh no. Oh, why did I even ask? <laughs> Yeah, as uh, okay. Andrew Hanks is Carmelo Anthony jersey. All right, uh, we're not, we're not going to go to Andrew to to vamp on his love for Carmelo Anthony and Jeremy Cohen. Yeoman's work as always. We are uh, T minus five and a half weeks away from the trade deadline, so more trade talk to come. For now, I think we set the stage very well for where things are at. Uh, anything else before we sign off? I think that's all. Okay. Well. <laughs> If you are out there listening and you dig the show and you dig all of the work that Jeremy puts into these cap or no caps, um, one, tweet at him and say thank you because he loves he loves getting tweeted at. Um, just as importantly, uh, support the show wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, give us a nice five star rating, drop a nice review, and of course, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. We love those subscriptions. Um, that is it from us. Uh, until next time, take care. Talk to you soon. Good up.